Soon after that, things escalated to the whole family being woken up at around 5.15 a.m. every morning to the smell of rotting flesh. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. Have you never been here before? Uh, we do a lot of things here. And yes, I am. I am making a statement. So, today's video, or tonight's video, because it's nighttime here, is going to be about the conjuring I decided that I want to do a series about all of the cases that Ed and Lorraine Warren worked on and I want to start like from like number one I guess I don't know um, I just want to start I'm gonna start with the conjuring and I'm going to do like Amityville Horror, I'm going to do Annabelle, anything that they worked on. I think there's like six that made it to like um, inspiring movies. So anything that inspired a movie, I'm on it. So we're going to start with The Conjuring, which was inspired by the story of the Perrin family. And there's like... There's a lot of information about it that's like, like each person is like slightly different from the other. So I'm going to give you the information that I researched and we're just going to take it for, for what it is. Because I, I looked for the similarities to make sure that it was at least close to being as accurate as possible. So let's just get started because this is going to take a minute regardless. Okay, so I have my phone here because I have like references in my notes. So if I'm looking at my phone, it's that's why. I just want to make sure I'm saying it correctly. Because I did a lot of research on this. I already kind of knew like about them and who Ed and Lorraine Warren were. But um, I don't know. Like I just wanted to do more research and share it. Because it's September, so it's basically Halloween. Okay, so basically, if you don't know who Ed and Lorraine Warren are, they are demonologists. Um, they're very well-known paranormal investigators, and they've done some of the most serious cases ever, I guess, in um, the States. And they, a lot of them inspired movies. They were so dramatic, so... Thundering. Perfect. Okay, don't hold on. Okay. Anyway. They their cases inspired a couple movies. A few movies. So we're gonna start with the conjuring. The conjuring movie was inspired by what happened to the Perrin family. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. And it's pretty creepy, but it like doesn't have like a conclusion almost. We'll just, you'll see. Okay, so Carolyn and Roger Perrin, they found this house in um, Harrisville, Rhode Island. And it was at least 10 to 14 bedrooms. It's a large home. I've seen 10, I've seen 14. We're just gonna say 10 to 14. It was a large home on like 200 acres. So I'm assuming they must have gotten it for a really good price. This was freaking haunted and I guess they didn't know. So they moved into this home and I guess the only like inkling they got about the home was that the previous owners said to them, leave the lights on at night. So other than that, they were completely unaware of the home's history. And apparently, what the home's history is, it was built originally in like uh, 1736, I believe. So it was super old. And this was in like 1970s when they moved into this. Um, but it was built in like 1736. And I guess the original owners, their last name was like Arnold because 
It's called the Old Arnold Estate in Rhode Island. So, a woman named Bathsheba Thayer was born in 1801. When she was in her 30s, she married a man named Judson Sherman, and they moved into the Old Arnold Estate. So, in 1830-something. So, um, she had one baby that one son that they're sure of that you know um, you can research when you research her you can find that she had at least one son but it is said that she actually had four children and three of them died when they were really young like toddler so apparently the story with Bathsheba is that she for some reason there was an infant in her care, someone else's child, um, maybe one of the neighbors. And the child, the infant, ended up dead. And the, op the autopsy reported that the cause of death was an incision in the back of the skull. Now obviously that was blamed on Bathsheba. And they said that she was a witch and she was trying to, or did, sacrifice the child to Satan. So, back then, obviously when you get called a witch, or they assume you to be a witch, I mean you've seen the movies, I'm sure. It, it doesn't end well. So, Bathsheba ended up either dying, killing, either she killed herself, or she just died. I'm, I'm not sure if someone killed her. There, that information is kind of like wishy-washy. Like some people say that she hung herself. Some say that she passed away in like 1880 or something like that. I don't know. But um, she ended up passing away angry. What, however it was, she was angry. And they say that she carried that anger into her afterlife and now torments whoever comes into contact with her. So, the Perrin family move in this home. They don't know anything about this except for that the previous owners say, leave the lights on at night. So when the Perrin family moves in this home, immediately things were happening, but they were mild and reported to be almost pleasant. Like, um, I think that they think or they thought that it was the original owners you know the ones that built the house mrs and mr arnold and she the ghost of mrs arnold would tuck the children into bed she would play with them and sometimes you could hear the broom sweeping and there would be piles of dirt next to it so the, the ghost would literally play with the kids and help with the chores so that, that was okay with them, but then things started to change. Soon after that, things escalated to the whole family being woken up at around 5.15 a.m. every morning to the smell of rotting flesh. And usually from what I've ever read and heard, is that's, a, that's a sign of a demon present. Um, so not good. <laughs> they would be thrown from their beds. They would hear scratching. Um, they would have their hair pulled. The children, if there were five girls. The, all of the children were girls and they would have their hair pulled and their legs tugged on and their arms. Um, so that was a little worse. And then they believed that they were encountering Bathsheba. And, um, she, yeah, she's still angry. <laughs> so, here come the disembodied voices, the furniture moving, doors banging, um, scratching and slapping. She would scratch, pinch, and slap Carolyn, the mother. She specifically targeted the mom because of her being the mother and wife of the home. She did not appreciate that, so she would torment her. She would torment Carolyn completely. She wanted her body. She wanted to inhabit her body from what, from what I read. 
she wanted to possess it which is again a demon I mean you can call it a spirit all day but in my opinion that was a demon Bathsheba would show herself she was very <laughs> bold she was very bold she wanted you to know or wanted them to know the parent family the poor parent family she wanted them to know that it was her and this was her home and this is how she felt so as the tormenting continued they began to just get exhausted with it they couldn't take it anymore so they contacted ed and lorraine warren ed and lorraine warren showed up to the farm to the farmhouse and the second Lorraine stepped in there, she said, there's a dark energy here. She knew it was a bad spirit. And she also knew, without even looking apparently, that there was um, an incision on Carolyn's leg, which matched the same incision that the baby had. Apparently she stabbed them or was poking them with sewing needles and created a circle um, and Carolyn had the same thing so Lorraine kind of like confirmed that yes she was guilty of the death of that infant because the parents were not religious um, an exorcism could not be performed on the home therefore they resulted to a seance and I'm speaking out of my own opinion and and from what I've learned that is the worst thing you can do. Do not ever try to contact anything. So obviously they did that and it got so bad that they kicked Ed and Lorraine out and just decided we will just deal with this. You made it worse. Just go, just leave. So nothing was accomplished. So the tormenting got worse. Um, I believe while they were doing the seance, Bathsheba actually took over Carolyn's body, but then once they stopped, she released it. But she did continue to torment 10 times worse. And sadly, they couldn't afford to, to leave. So they had to live there and deal with that for like seven more years. And it's also sad that they were not religious because had they known being a child of God, you can cast those things out. You have power over them. But I'm not going to get into that right now. What I am going to say is that, um, obviously, the movie The Conjuring was made. When The Conjuring was put out, the new owner of that home was basically like, this is fake, this is fabricated, this doesn't happen, this house is not haunted. They made it up. But if you ask any of the parent family, I mean, they've written books on it themselves. And I don't, I just don't think that someone would fabricate something to that extent. I don't, maybe they did. We don't really know. The new owner says that it's completely fake. But she may just be saying that because she doesn't want people stopping by her home. Because I'm sure, I mean, the act, it's on the internet. So anyone could stop by there. And please, like, if you're in that area and you watch any video on it and you're curious, like, that, that's someone's home. Don't stop by there and harass them. And that very well may be why she says that it's not haunted so that people would stop coming by there. Because I know that a lot of people started trespassing on that property the second the movie was, was released and they found out where it was. So please don't do that. I've also heard that the ghosts or spirits or demons followed the family when they left. There was a lot of things that I didn't talk about in this video that happened to them because I don't want it to be 10 hours long. But you can research it yourself and there's plenty of other videos on here too that will tell you, you know, more things that they were tormented by. Um, I just, I don't know. I believe that they, maybe, maybe they did. Maybe the demons or spirits did follow them and that's why the woman who lives there now hasn't experienced anything because it wasn't just the house. I mean, when something is attached to you, it can follow you wherever it wants to go until you get rid of it. You have to get rid of it. Like, you have to tell it to leave in the name of Jesus. And if you don't believe in Jesus, I am sorry. I will pray for you. <laughs> but maybe that's why. So there was really no closure for that family. I'm not, I'm not sure if there's any closure for any of them. You can actually, actually some people say that it doesn't even have anything to do with this Bathsheba woman. 
Um, Bathsheba does have a gravestone in Rhode Island. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's true. It would be really sad though if it wasn't true and they just like slandered this woman's name and she's dead she can't defend herself I don't know but uh, that's the research I found so tell me what you think tell me what you've heard about it and um, I think the next video I want to do might be Annabelle because that crap is creepy so um, I don't know let me know what you thought of this video if you have any other information that I left out Comment below and let me know because I'm really interested in this stuff. Like, obviously, I wouldn't interact with anything like that. I wouldn't do anything like that. But researching it and finding out where they got the movie ideas from, I'm really interested in. So if you enjoyed this video and if you have any movies that you want to know about, um, I will research it. So let me know. Comment or message me and let me know what movies you're interested in finding out where they got the idea from. Um, I'm just really interested in Ed and Lorraine Warren's cases, especially the ones that inspired movies. They have an occult museum that you can actually go visit. I personally would not because I'm not trying to be around no haunted dolls, no cursed dolls, no cursed or haunted objects. Like, I'm not trying to be around none of that. Um, but you're in that area and you want to do that you go right ahead they have a whole museum make sure you like and comment and subscribe turn on my notifications so that you can see when I post the next one um, I'm really into the paranormal stuff right now but if there's any other kind of videos you guys want me to do even if it's not paranormal just let me know and I will look into it but um, obviously I'm ready for Halloween so I'm kind of like trying to enjoy it for two months instead of one like normal so I hope you guys like my background anyway thank you for watching I hope you liked this and I'll see you in the next one